Justice uh, N. V. Ramana, Chief Justice of India. Justice uh, Satish Chandra Sharma, Chief Justice uh, Telangana High Court. Shri Chandrasekhar Rao, Chief Minister of uh, Telangana. Shri Indrakaran Reddy, Minister for Law. My colleagues from the Supreme Court, Mr. Subhash Reddy, who is Justice Subhash Reddy, who will join us soon, and Justice Kima Kohli, and Justice uh, Narsima, Justice Kurian Joseph, former judge of the Supreme Court, Mr. Prashant Mishra, Chief Justice of the Andhra Pradesh High Court, judges of uh, the Telangana High Court and uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, High Court, Mr. K. T. Ramarao and his uh, cabinet uh, colleagues, members of the Governing Council, representatives of uh, the industry and business from Hyderabad and uh, other places, the press, and all others uh, present here. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, uh, I should tell you that uh, this center is a brainchild of the Chief Justice of India. Immediately after uh, taking over as Chief Justice, uh, we had a discussion and he told me that uh, there was this concept of starting a center about 20 years back and even land was allotted uh, by the then government. But uh, the center uh, could not uh, materialize. So we discussed about uh, the center and uh, the usefulness of this center and how it would uh, cater to those who are seeking to resolve the disputes uh, by arbitration. Without the cooperation of the government of uh, Telangana, we could not have achieved the progress which we have achieved so far. And with the active assistance of uh, Mr. K. T. Ramarao, and uh, the law minister, we have made uh, significant progress even before the inauguration takes place on 18th of uh, December. Justice uh, Ravindran, who is uh, a life trustee, has been an inspiration I have been working with him closely for the past uh, four months and he's so punctilious and with uh, the able guidance of uh, Justice Ravindran, the members of the Governing Council have framed the rules of the trust as well as the arbitration and uh, mediation centre. We have accomplished uh, people from uh, the field of arbitration in the Governing Council. Sir Bernard Eder is an international arbitrator and mediator who has 35 years of experience in commercial litigation and international arbitration. He is a member of the Governing Council. Mr. Toby Landau is a barrister and an advocate and a member of the bars of England and Wales, Singapore, New York, and he is also an experienced arbitrator who has consented to be a member of the Governing Council. We have Dr. Yon Young Park, who is the Vice President of the London Court of International Arbitration and a member of the Singapore International Arbitration Centre, who is also a member of uh, a Governing Council member. Mr. Chitra Narayan, who is a renowned uh, arbitrator, 
has consented to be in the governing council. We have Mr. Nakul Diwan, who is a senior counsel, who is a very busy arbitration practitioner. He is also a member of the council. We have Pramod, Narai, Pramod Nair, who specializes in arbitration, who is a member. Mr. Sitesh Mukherjee, he is a member of the governing council and he is the pro tem CEO. Till we appoint a regular CEO, he has been uh, in charge of the affairs of uh, the trust till now. We appointed uh, Tari Khan, who is very well experienced uh, in the field of arbitration, who will be the registrar of uh, this center. Before I say a few words, I would like you to hear the messages sent by members of the governing council from beyond the shores, Mr. Toby Lando and Dr. Yon Yang Park. Honorable Chief Justice of India, Honorable Mr. Justice L.N. Rao, Judge Supreme Court of India, Honorable Chief Minister of the State of Telangana, Honorable Chief Justice of the High Court of Telangana, other distinguished judges of the Supreme Court of India and the High Court of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now getting quite cold in London, but I send you all very warm greetings and best wishes with regard to the launch of the International Arbitration and Mediation Centre in Hyderabad. Over almost 50 years, my own practice, both as counsel and as arbitrator, has focused on international arbitration. And during that time, the old days of ad hoc arbitration have largely given way to institutional arbitration, and for very good reason. Experience has shown the substantial advantages of institutional arbitration from the beginning of the arbitral process when the tribunal is first appointed until the publication of the award. It provides an appropriate structure for the resolution of commercial disputes and ensures so far as possible that the arbitral process is carried out fairly with reasonable speed and at reasonable cost. These three objectives, fairness in process, reasonable speed and reasonable cost, lie at the heart of successful modern commercial arbitration. It is with these objectives in mind that the IAMC has been set up and the applicable arbitration rules have been drafted. Under the watchful eye and guiding hand of the Board of Trustees and the Registrar, I am sure that these objectives will be achieved and that the IAMC Hyderabad will soon become one of the great arbitral institutions in the world. So it is a great honour and privilege for me to send you greetings from London and to wish everybody a successful launch of the International Arbitration and Mediation Centre, Hyderabad. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on the Governing Council of the International Arbitration and Mediation Centre, Hyderabad. This centre is a great initiative to match a rapidly developing market in Hyderabad and looks to start a new era of doing business in Hyderabad. Hyderabad, with its uh, vast IT industry, is the ideal location to set up the International Arbitration and Mediation Center. Arbitration and mediation are the model forms of dispute resolution for such an industry, as they provide efficiency and predictability, and most notably for the IT industry, confidentiality. These factors are also highly attractive to Hyderabad's other major industries in pharma and construction and would incentivize both imports and exports from Hyderabad. A robust arbitration and mediation practice for both international and domestic disputes result in much more effective and viable economic development. 
Hyderabad has earned the nickname Hyderabad with its strong development of the IT market, making it India's leading hub for such services. And a modern professional arbitration and mediation center will take its national and international presence to new heights. The presence of the Honorable Chief Justice and other distinguished national judicial luminaries. Here is a wonderful sign of the collaboration between the judicial and arbitral worlds that this center will ensure. I'm sure with its capable officers and highly competent professionals who will be a part of this center, it will be a roaring success and be a shining example of dispute resolution for both India and the world. Thank you very much. All of you might be thinking why we members of the judiciary are talking about alternate dispute resolution. With the existing uh, infrastructure and uh, the number of judges that are available in this country, it will be impossible to clear the backlog. We have more than four crore cases pending in all courts in this country. As uh, the Chief Minister was mentioning, arbitration and mediation are historic. They have been existing from ages. Prince Philip, who is the father of Alexander, is supposed to have settled a dispute pertaining territory to territory through mediation. The English have arbitration in commerce since 1224, which is about 900 years back. And we in our country have also been practicing arbitration even at the village level, as was pointed out by the Chief Minister. Arbitrations which are conducted ad hoc, which is the parties get together and decide on the person who is going to resolve the disputes and they decide on what the rules would be and they decide on the procedure to be followed. Flexibility is there in ad hoc arbitrations. In so far as institutional arbitrations are concerned, there are distinct advantages. Institutional arbitrations are conducted by institutions, by a court annexed institution which runs on the guidance of the court by matters referred to from the court. And you have a court assisted arbitration center where the court keeps its arm's length, but there's a cooperation of the court. And there are freestanding models like our arbitration center, which is not connected to any court. So why should there be institutional arbitration? And all of you know that arbitrations can be conducted ad hoc. The 246th Law Commission, by noting that the Arbitration Act of 1996 is agnostic in so far as institutional arbitrations are concerned, recommended that there should be an amendment to Section 11.6 of the Arbitration Act to redress the systemic malaise the advantages of institutional arbitration was recognized by the Law Commission. Thereafter, a commission was appointed headed by Justice B. N. Sri Krishna, of which uh, Justice Ravindran and Justice Narsimha were also members, to make recommendations for amendment to the Arbitration Act. Recommendations made by Sri Krishna Commission led to the amendment to the Arbitration Act in 2019. Justice Sri Krishna, in his report, referred to the advantages of international arbitration, which are that the institutional arbitrations would offer a clear set of arbitration rules and timelines for the conduct of arbitrations, support from trained staff who administer various stages of the arbitration proceedings, 
a panel of arbitrators to choose from depending on the required area of expertise and in some cases supervision in the form of scrutiny of awards. You might be knowing that uh, there are not too many international arbitrations or disputes that are settled by the institutions that are existing in India. Even in the report, just as Sri Krishna refers to the five most preferred destinations for uh, arbitrations. One is the London Court of International Arbitration, the Stockholm Court, the ICC, the Hong Kong International Arbitration Center, and the Singapore International Arbitration Center. Only last year, there are 500 cases where Indian parties are involved which have gone to the Singapore International Arbitration Center. And statistics would show that there are nearly 120 cases which have gone to Paris. All this is because of what has been identified by Justice Sri Krishna in his report. The reasons for people not utilizing institutions in India, the reasons given by him are lack of credible arbitral institutions in India. He says that existing arbitral institutions in India are not up to date with international best practices and may not have staff with the requisite skill set to be able to provide the support that parties and arbitrators look for. In matching up to the facilities provided by and practices followed by international institutions of repute, institutions here may be out of their depth without appropriate knowledge and experience. The second problem is misconceptions relating to international arbitrations. There is a notion that institutional arbitrations end up hurting the pockets of the parties. This is without any basis as fee charged by the IAMC Hyderabad is very reasonable and are more or less comparable to the fee specified in the fourth schedule of the Arbitration Act. Long hours have been spent by Justice Ravindran and the members of the governing council in finalizing the fee that is to be charged by the center and the fee that is to be fixed for payment to the arbitrators. With arbitration being facilitated by an institution where all organizational and administrative needs are catered under one roof, the proceedings are likelier to conclude earlier, thereby saving costs. It is also believed that institutional arbitration affects party autonomy significantly. However, the institutions are careful to respect party autonomy and tend to protect only issues concerning integrity of proceedings from the parties. The other anomaly that was found by Justice Sri Krishna is that there is lack of governmental support for institutional arbitrations, which we have in abundance courtesy the Chief Minister, Mr. Ramarao and his cabinet colleagues. With this active support of the government, where arbitral institutions would be given an opportunity to prove their mettle. I see a bright future for this center. Lack of statutory backing of institutional arbitration is one problem that Sri Krishna pointed out. Centers like Singapore and Hong Kong have owed a substantial degree of their success by being designated as the default authorities for when parties are unable to decide on appointment of arbitrators. While there have been similar recommendations and subsequent amendments to the Arbitration Act to incorporate similar provisions requiring the courts to designate graded arbitral institutions, these provisions are yet to come into effect. The Commission made some plain speaking about judicial attitudes to arbitration, which need not be mentioned at this platform. The top institutions which I have mentioned get work because of the deficiencies in the institutions in India. I am sure that this institution would provide a platform for all of you to utilize this uh, world-class uh, facility. I should tell you that uh, there is another misnomer that these centers are good only for uh, arbitrations where there is huge amount of uh, money involved, the stakes are very high, which is not true. Even uh, arbitrations where the stakes are less, 
can be taken by the arbitration center at uh, less cost. We also encourage ad hoc arbitrations. You can use the facility that has been created by the center. We have created a world-class facility for online arbitrations. And apart from this, I should say a word about mediation. Mediation is a fast-growing alternate dispute uh, resolution. People can, with the assistance of a mediator, resolve their disputes to start with. There's a protocol that we have developed for MEDARB, where you have a mediation. If it's not settled in mediation, the matter can be settled by arbitration. We also have a protocol for ARB MEDARB, which would be that you start off with a mediation, and if the, mediator, if the arbitrators feel that certain issues or all the issues can be settled through uh, mediation, they'll suspend the arbitration proceedings, mediation can be proceeded with, and ultimately they come back and then pass an award which is binding on the parties. So we have made rules and protocol for mediation, MEDAB, as well as AB MEDAB. The relevance of mediation, MEDAB, and uh, AB MEDAB along with uh, arbitration would be very significant in these days of uh, growing business activity, the economic growth, and uh, people entering into agreements. Initially, when you enter into an agreement, everything is hunky-dory. But thereafter, in case there is a dispute, any diligent or prudent businessman would be thinking, what if, what if there is a problem, whether my dispute will be resolved early? And this center, definitely is going to pro provide that platform for early resolution of disputes in a very effective manner and at less cost. I'm sure that this center coming up in the city of Pearls would add to the glory of the vibrant metropolis. Thank you very much.